Confederate soldiers, we submit the vindication of the cause for which we fought. To your strength will be given the defense of the Confederate soldier's good name, the guardianship of his history, the emulation of his virtues, the perpetuation of those principles which he loved and which made him glorious and which you also cherish. Remember, it is your duty to see that the true history of the South is presented to future generations. General Stephen Dill Lee, New Orleans, Louisiana, April 24, 1906. Located 65 miles south of our state's capital is historic Gonzales, juxtaposed between the San Marcos and Guadalupe rivers. As fourth graders learn in Texas history, Gonzales is known as the birthplace of Texas freedom. In 1835, 18 brave men of Gonzales refused to surrender the town's cannon, its main means of protection to the Mexican government. Sewn on a black and white flag, the men sent the message, Come and take it. The message was repeated by a cannon shot, which was the first shot fired for independence in the Lone Star State. Thus began the colorful, varied history of Gonzales and the state of Texas. Only a few months later, a plea for reinforcements reached the citizens of Gonzales from the Alamo. 32 men answered the plea and lost their lives at the Alamo. Today, a concrete marker names each of these immortal 32 in Pioneer Village, a living history center in Gonzales. Also inside the grounds of Pioneer Village sits quiet, Hammond Church, where the ghosts of former congregations might gather as a visitor settles into a pew. A visitor might also imagine other ghosts wandering the deserted, unrecognized area once known as Fort Wall. Located to the southeast of Pioneer Village is the earthen embankment where Fort Wall, built during the war between the states for the purpose of stopping Union forces from penetrating into Texas via the River Road. This was the only Confederate fort of its type commissioned to be built west of the Mississippi River. Today, as you travel the streets of Gonzales, where downtown streets are named after saints and arranged alphabetically, there are over 80 historical homes and buildings identified in a pamphlet guiding you on your driving tour emphasizing the homes of cattle barons, lawyers, and bankers who built after the war between the states. However, Fort Wall is missing from the historic driving tour pamphlet.
Fearing invasion and loss of supplies, the Confederate States of America commissioned the construction of a fort near Gonzales to protect against possible attacks inland by Union troops. The construction began December 1863 and continued during the first half of 1864. Colonel Albert Miller Lee was appointed to be Chief Engineer. He was a graduate of West Point and served as Secretary of War under President Millard Fillmore. Fort Wall Earthenworks remains are located on a hill that has been known as Waldrop Hill, one and a quarter miles north of downtown Gonzales. Today, Fort Wall is the forgotten fort of Gonzales, the forgotten fort of Texas, as well as the forgotten fort of the Confederacy, and sadly, a forgotten part of American history. Events leading to the establishment of Fort Wall begins early 1861 in Austin, where the question of secession was placed before the voters. Texans voted three to one to withdraw from the Union. The die was cast. Texas would secede to join the Confederate States of America. Gonzales County voted 10 to one to secede. This patriotic support was also evident in the number of soldiers who volunteered to fight for the Confederacy. When word reached Texas that Confederate States of America President Jefferson Davis was calling for 100,000 volunteers, military leaders swooped down on Gonzales County, long known and remembered for its valor and patriotism. 77 men volunteered immediately and joined what would later became known as Wall's Legion. The majority of the recruiting that followed in Gonzales County was done primarily by three regiments, Terry's Texas Rangers, Hood's Texas Brigade, and the 2nd Texas Infantry. As a matter of fact, horsemen of Gonzales County quickly formed three companies of Terry's Texas Rangers, who were destined to become one of the most famous regiments in the war between the states. According to a passage from the book, Texas the 28th Star, these Texas Rangers won lasting fame for their mobility and daring. In 1861, recruiters started seeking volunteers for John Bell Hood's Texas Brigade. By the end of May, the company was full strength, composed entirely of Gonzales County men. The company quickly changed from cavalry to infantry via orders from the War Department. Successful recruiting continued in Gonzales County to form the 2nd Texas Infantry, which was commissioned to defend the states along the Mississippi River under the leadership of Albert Sidney Johnston. The addition of the Gonzales Invincibles and the Wilson Rifles brought the unit to full strength. Over 1,000 men from Gonzales County fought for the Confederacy, and the citizen came out in full strength to send their sons, fathers, and husbands off to do their duty to God and country in a righteous fight for states' rights. Those left behind certainly did their patriotic duty by forming the Home Guard. The young and the old of the community joined to eventually form five units who were charged with protecting the homeland. The guardsmen ranged in ages of 13 to 70 with the majority being aged 40 to 45. The Home Guard was ready to defend the area and probably help build the Fort Wall garrison. The works of defense near Gonzales, as it was labeled in 1863, was not named until our Texas soldiers returned home at the end of the war. The soldiers in Wall's Brigade named the fort in honor of their esteemed leader. Thomas Wall, a South Carolinian, moved to Gonzales County, Texas with his wife America Simmons in 1850 where he established a law practice as well as a cotton plantation. After a few years as a politician, he recruited Wall's Legion, for which he was commissioned colonel in 1862. Only a year later, he was promoted to Brigadier General. Towards the end of his life, 
after again practicing law and farming, he died in 1903 and is buried in Fort Worth, Texas. Before the war, a person asked him, suppose Lincoln should be elected, what would you do? Without a moment's hesitation, he replied, God Almighty grant that that day will never come. Yet should that evil day come, then, as under all circumstances, I shall remember that I am a native son of the South, and shall say as Ruth said to Naomi in the Bible, Whither thou goest, I will go, and where thou lodgest, I will lodge. His discipline and valor became a household word in Southern homes, and it is evident that his personal gallantry and military skill was prompted returning soldiers to name the defense works near Gonzales in his honor. The undated map of works of defense near Gonzales lists Forgotten Fort Wall as being 750 feet by 250 feet. The base parapet was 18 feet by 6 feet. There were bastions at each corner and a salient redan in the middle of the east and west walls. No matter how small the fort was, no matter how small the action was, or no matter how short the endurance of the fort, we should not diminish the amount of recognition this fort should receive. It is one of a kind, the only fort west of the Mississippi commissioned by Confederate President Jefferson Davis. This fort deserves to lose the title, the Old Forgotten Fort. In the late 1860s, the fort fell into decay. The stones from the blockhouse were used to construct buildings in downtown Gonzales. The remains may be scarce, but this little piece of history is worth saving. If the Union Army thought Gonzales was important enough to destroy, they made plans to do so, and the Confederacy thought it was important enough to save by building a fort, why shouldn't the rest of the world think that the fort is important enough to save? The location of Fort Wall near two major highways and an interstate will allow it to be easily reached by visitors who are attracted by the many historic buildings and memorials such as Come and Take It that are found in Gonzales. Because Fort Wall is important and because the people of Texas will be interested in seeing the fort to receive its due recognition, this fort is worthy of our attention, dedication, and efforts. According to the AR Consultants Cultural Resources Report completed in July 1985, the fort needs to be maintained in a cleared and protected condition. Then a self-guided tour should also be developed and made available to tourists who might visit the area and Pioneer Village. Further research and excavation should occur in history groups such as the Sons of Confederate Veterans and the United Daughters of the Confederacy should be made aware of the ultimate goal and be offered the opportunity to join the endeavors to bring this historical site to fulfillment. In addition, Fort Wall should be placed on the National Registry of Historic Places because of its significance to a major event in American history. City Fathers should become totally committed to restoring the fort and maintaining the historic evidence therein to further Gonzalez's image as a patriotic community. All efforts should be made to secure necessary financing and acquisition to identify and promote Fort Wall's historical significance. Lieutenant General Joseph Wheeler saluted the Confederate soldiers in his last order dated April 24, 1865. Gallant comrades, you have fought your fight. Your task is done. You have exhibited courage, fortitude, and devotion. You are heroes, veterans, and patriots. The bones of your comrades mark the battlefields, and in bidding adieu, I desire to tender my thanks for your gallantry, your fortitude, and devotion.
Today, 140 years later, we must ask ourselves, are we honoring these gallant comrades, heroes, veterans, and patriots appropriately by ignoring Old Fort Wall? Our task is not done. We need, as General Wheeler said, to exhibit courage, fortitude, and devotion to restore Fort Wall to its rightful place in the history of Gonzales, Texas, and the United States of America. In the downtown square is a statue erected in 1909 by the United Daughters of the Confederacy, Chapter 545. On one side, the inscription reads, Lest we forget. Have we already forgotten? Let's hope not. The message is clear. Lest we forget. As you go on your travels, follow the road that leads you to Fort Wall. <laughs>